in, in that sense, <clears throat> if I hear you correctly, would it be wrong for me to say that when I do a good job, I should shout about it so that my boss knows about it? Like I said, if you are an engineer or an executive, fair enough. The boss will micromanage you and he will know. But when you are a manager, you need to not only do, but you need to sell. I mean, can, let me share this story. When you run your own company, you produce products. Do you, are you busy perfecting on the way the product is manufactured or do you spend enough time on marketing, advertising and selling the product? You do the, 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 the latter more, right? So, yeah. so likewise, when you are doing something that's valuable to the organization and you are in a leadership level, as a manager's level, you need to master the art of selling what you're doing. That's part of PQ skills. Yes, Dino, that's the answer. No. But, you know, sometimes, right, when, when people do that, other people are going to say, oh, this guy is a show off, this guy is trying to, you know, uh, buy the CEO's heart, and this guy is trying to, you know, keep us, as they say, right? Keep us the bosses by, by showing off and <laughs> telling people how good it is. Uh, so it, it, it now boils into, you know, people looking at you and say, I, I don't like this guy. So what, what happens then? You know, what do we do then? Uh, well, if he does that and he does a good job to deliver the results that the organization yeah. needs, he deserves all the reward and recognition. You lose out because you've been busy thinking, oh, that's uh, against my values. Uh, I, I want to walk a higher moral ground. Fine. If you want to walk a higher moral ground, you don't want to be the one who want to keep us and, you know, uh, sell and, and advertise what you do. Don't complain when the other person gets promoted. That's my answer. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And, and you know, people, uh, I, I find that sometimes Asians are a little bit more uh, shy to you know, sh show people what they can really do. And I, I suppose, like you said, you'll be at a disadvantage and you will lose out in that sense. All right? Yeah. yeah. OK, cool. Now, um, just, just uh, looking at that, um, can, you, can you give an, an, an another example? Give us another example of, uh, that articulates PQ in action. Oh, there's many, uh, but the one I like to always speak and share is uh, assuming you are in a staff meeting or you're in a meeting talking about some strategies and planning and you were to notice that your fellow peer uh, tend to, again, raise his or her hands, provide more suggestions and opinion, sometimes even ask questions that is probably two levels above, you know, where we all are, way too visionary. Typical reaction of the rest, myself included, you know, at that time, was like, ah, like you said, you know, oh, like, uh, they come on, this guy doesn't know what he's asking, or he's trying to be visible, or he's trying to show that he's really thinking something. Like, that's our common reaction. But if you were to look at it from a slightly different perspective, the reality is that person is asking questions to also indicate that he has put the thinking through earlier. Now, if you are a boss and you have a, a, you know, a group of uh, group leaders or managers and one or two shines by asking some of those very important triggering questions, yeah. how would your reaction be? Say, hey, Raj, that is a good question. There you go. You just strike early. That's one of the PQ power principles. You just strike early. You decided to show that you are taking charge and taking control. And as a result, you have gained that visibility. The boss is going to remember you. And assuming in that session, the boss's boss or, you know, some other senior leaders are there, they, they, they interact with us probably half an hour in a month. And within that half an hour, they are going to be able to see one or two persons who really ask the triggering question. And when they do that, there you go. The answer is clear, right? The person who has actually taken the trouble to understand the objective of the meeting, did a bit of homework to make sure that he or she can ask the right question and as a result, perceived to be visible. Takes the bigger share of the pie. Now that's PQ skills. Yeah, I think what in, in a lot of the programs that I run in communication, I think one of the key things that I've always told participants is really polish up your skill of asking questions. Exactly. Yeah, 
So when you learn to ask a lot more questions and, and ask the right questions, you get noticed. And, and you're right. A lot of top leaders don't have a lot of time with us. They, they spend about half, a, half an hour or so. And if you say the right thing, you get noticed. If you get noticed, then people know you. Right? Exactly. So, not so much of people who knows you, uh, people who you know, but it's of people who knows you and who can pick up on, on you know, uh, that quality of yours during that half an hour, even the 15 minutes. Right? Yeah. Or even if it's uh, an elevator ride from the, the ground floor to the penthouse, for example, <laughs> yours in the same elevator is. Yeah, yeah. So you I, be able to do that, right? I just wanted to add on to what you just said, you know, uh, if you master PQ skills, one of the things you will really be good at doing is shifting the anchor. Uh, this, skill, yeah, this is a skill where when you know you are into a discussion that is, uh, you know, you're going to go into a meeting where you're going to be possibly shot down or you're going to look not so good because there's some overwhelming energy or data or facts or people into the meeting. So when you master one of these PQ skills out of the 10, what you can do when you strike early, you will be able to shift the whole anchor of conversation so much so that the negotiation will be shifted towards a new area, right? Uh, I've seen many PQ managers do that in my in my past experience working in that company for 18 years. They they know that we know that they're going to be in the line of fire, uh -huh. but you know not only they they come out from the line of fire, they ask uh, triggering questions or right questions like you say, so much so that they shift the anchor and the whole dynamics of the meeting turn in a different direction. Now I used to be like thinking. What the hell just happened? You know, so these are the behaviors that I, I really believe are, are not taught in school. These are skills that you have to embrace and you have to practice and apply. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I've seen a few of those. You just reminded me of a few colleagues that I had in the past that was actually very good in asking questions and suddenly convert the whole entire meeting and focus on something else. Yeah, that's, that's very good. And some of the yeah. people I work with are also very good with that. You know, and just divert the attention. We have a question actually from um, Shami. Shami says, he understands about the asking question part, but what about the answering the questions? What about answering the question? Is there any tips on how we, we should be answering uh, a good questions, for example? Thank you, good question. I'm gonna probably give you a lousy answer, but that's the best I could do now. Uh, when you are an engineer or an executive, you need to master IQ for you to answer questions correctly. When you ascend your career ladder as a manager, you need to prepare your PQ to ask the right questions. So your role, uh, as your role as a leader is not claiming credit by answering a question and say, yay, I got the answer right. No, as a leader, your role is to ask the right triggering question so much so it leads to a different dynamics in discussion, a brainstorming, a creativity outcome or innovative outcome. And as a result, you drive actions beyond that. So preparing the right answer, you can always do that. Um, you know, part of the PQ skill, that's not really answering right question, but more of preparing for a meeting. One of the PQ skill requires you to really know who are the audience of a meeting. You know, really know who's attending the meeting and to go to a level that uh, if you know the person who's attending the meeting is, a, you know, from an NLP perspective, is a very visual person. You need to be prepared with pictures so that if he or she were to post a question, you don't give a page with 20 bullets. You're not going to get a message across. You prepare a couple of pictures that possibly can touch the emotion, if you will, and then just state a few power statements and then get the whole conversation over. So there is a preparation involved, you know, and the person who asked the question on how do you prepare yourself to go for the meeting? You understand who's attending, you understand their, their, their position power, their connections, you understand um, what are their dynamics from an NLP perspective. You even go on to understand the meta programs, the way they analyze data. Let me just finish this before I end my answer to this question, Tino. If you know the person who's going to be giving you a tough time, 
is a person who's always into going away from something rather than going towards something. Your answer should be articulated in such a way that Mr. X, if we were to do these, these things, we will not be having to put up with this shit anymore. We can reduce this. We don't have to be working late. We know blah, blah, blah. He's, he's going to take your attention, catch your attention. Because he's not the type, okay, if we do this, we're going to have 20% increase in sale, reduction in, he's not interested. He wants to know what are the pain points that's going to be taken away. Now, if you, I, I guess, studying your audience, including studying your competitors as a manager, involves this skill. Right. Okay. So, yeah, I, I think that that makes a lot of sense too. If, if we know who our 